Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I want to do a little bit of a dive into a question that we have with No Man's Sky. It seems to be a repeating question that happens around this time, pretty much every year, when there's a little bit of a lull in news and updates from Hello Games. When I say there's a lull, we have just had some patches and some fixes come out for multiple platforms. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's completely a lull, but even still, the question has arose, is No Man's Sky done? Dying or dead? Now, I did a poll over on my uh, community tabs. So let's jump on over there, people. Okay, jump. So here we are over on the old Tinterwebs. And here is my question. The question is doing its rounds on social medias. And I've seen other creators ask it. Is No Man's Sky Dead? So yeah, that's, that's if you just search Is No Man's Sky Dead, you're going to see a couple of content creators have done videos. Some saying, is ship hunting dead? But is No Man's Sky Dead? It seems to be a reoccurring question that happens year on year. Usually when there's a lull, you know, sometimes even in December time where, you know, we've got the reduxes and things like that. Yeah, and, but the question is rearing its head more so now because Light No Fire has been announced. Anyway, here's my thoughts. My thoughts. I think Hello Games will keep doing big updates and expeditions for at least two more years to reach that 10-year anniversary of the launch of No Man's Sky. This also gives a healthy overlap with Light No Fire. I then think they may swap focus to Light No Fire but still do a couple of... Um, seasonal updates to No Man's Sky. Maybe not quite seasonal, but maybe a couple of updates a year, rather than four or five updates a year, or six, or whatever we're lucky to get. Maybe it might just be two, but maybe they might be slightly larger. But I doubt they'll drop No Man's Sky, as both games are very different genres, sci-fi and fantasy. I do think, though, that they might lift and shift things. If they've created something that's quite cool in No Man's Sky that could work inside a light no fire, then they might do that, like if they improve the relic sites or something like that. They could easily put that inside of Light No Fire, couldn't they? Or in Light No Fire, if they make boss creatures, they could lift and shift some of that code, give a new skeleton to the actual code. Boom, we've got boss creatures in No Man's Sky. Anyways, hit up the poll. Most of these are from what I'm seeing online as the main outliners. Hit up the comments and I'll be doing a deep dive podcast into this video soon. This video is that video, people inside the view of us. Okay, well, let's uh, scroll down, down. So here's the actual things that you can choose. Heck no, ARG Part 4 is due. And Sean said 2024 be big. Yeah, 49% hit that up. And I'm pretty much in that camp, to be fair. That's pretty much where I'm sitting. I think this year is going to be a big year. I think even next year might still be quite a large year for No Man's Sky. It's probably going to be larger for Light No Fire. But I don't think we're going to see Light No Fire until maybe the tail end of 2025. I'm thinking August. Anyway, heck yes, updates of Fluffy Dice, Cosmetic, No Meat on the Bones. Now, every single update, I see people say the similar sort of thing. Oh, there, yes, this is lovely, but it only, it's only kept me busy for two weeks. And then what? Now, now what do I do? These things are very shallow. They seem to just be staple holders. You know, the ship customization. We've got three types of ship where there's quite a lot of more different types of ship. You know, that sort of stuff. So I do see where people are coming from when they say that a lot of these updates are cosmetic and haven't really affected the core of gameplay. But on the same argument, I would say that the last update that we had, you know, the orbital update, it gave us, it bottomed out, gave depth to guilds. The guild agent now actually has function, rhyme and reason. So they are revisiting things that don't, that are shallow and add in a bit of depth. So it's going to be a little bit of time, but they will circle all the way back round and hit ship customization at some point. I'm pretty confident they will and add in other ships. I mean, even in the trailer, we saw that they had shuttles inside of the holographic projection for the types of ships you can make. So I think shuttles are definitely on the horizon. And maybe the solar ships might come into the pirate stations and we might get a ship outfitter inside of there. You know, maybe they might overhaul the pirate stations slightly. What the fudge, no? Hello Games keeps doing updates, 23%. But if you take that 23% and add it onto that 49%, that's going to give you, what, 60, 72. 72% of people are saying, no way. You know, there's, there's still life in the old dog yet. No Man's Sky is going to be around for some time yet to come. And I have to agree. 
That's exactly what I think. What the fudge? Yes, with light, no fire drops. No man's start, sky will stop updating. 6% of people said that. Now, when you look at the other titles that Hello Games have put out there, nothing is quite as big as their No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is their flagship. It's their bread and butter. It's their winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't know whether they're going to move away from it all too quickly because that's what's bringing in their revenue. They'll be crazy to just drop it on the day that they drop Light No Fire. That's why I think there's going to be a healthy overlap where they're going to be continuing to update No Man's Sky, even while Light No Fire is gaining its traction, bringing in its fan base and players understanding what Light No Fire is and what Light No Fire is all about. I still think they've got to keep stoking the flames inside of good old No Man's Sky just to keep the player bases from just completely falling away and to keep their revenue, you know, trickling over. Okay, and then 11% of people said that they agree with me and they just want to see the poll results, which is lovely. And if you scroll on down to the actual comments on this, people, we've got quite a lot of comments. So before we deep dive into this, I'm just going to take a quick breath. Okay, username. EXC, not found, says, I'd say the game just needs better, why should I do this? Since at one point you could do all the activated in your mind thing, but why? Why should I bother going to a centre manually rather than spamming the first glyph on the portal? Yeah, in yesteryear, when you actually travelled by portal, you used to get portal interference, which sort of stopped you from then jumping out of that system. So you could jump to the system, visit that system, but then that's it. You know, you had to go back through the portal, and it sort of negated that little mini shortcut. So people would use black holes or they'd be warping to places so they could get to the center. Now you can just spam in a glyph sequence near to the center or even the first portal like username XC not found says. And it takes you about what 4,000 light years from the center. It's like what three jumps if that, if your light, light, light year range is rubbish. But yeah, I totally get that. And I don't understand why they changed the game mechanics in the way that they did. I don't really understand why they gave us the ability to change game mode on the fly. But I use it. I use it a lot. And I do use that spam in the glyph to get to the center a little bit quicker. Uh, so, you know, maybe they did it because they thought the community wanted it. But for me, I would have rathered it if they left things the way they were and didn't give us that option in a roundabout way. Because, yeah, I used to like having my idiom farms. I used to like creating my own sort of um, stasis devices. Now I don't need to. Now I just chuck it in creative mode, get whatever I need, chuck it back into normal mode when I'm done. Anyway, we've got Joe in the house. Hello there, Joe. Absolutely no, not. Why go for all the trouble of making the new expedition terminal if they're just going to drop the game? <laughs> I could see updates dwindle a bit after the summer big update. Just explorations, however. Yeah, I mean, it could be that. They might just sort of, you know, limit what they actually provide to the community. They might just put out expeditions, new Quicksilver items, keep people running those Quicksilver missions, keep doing the, ex the expeditions through that new terminal. I think the Reduxes this year could be quite interesting from that terminal. But I, I'm a little bit miffed as to why we haven't seen a couple of expeditions already this year. I mean, we are heading into summer soon. I mean... We're fully into freaking spring now. I would have liked to have seen some sort of spring expedition pop into iteration. James MC. Hello there, James. So many answered questions. Far from dead. No Man's Sky is a cash cow for future developments. Ah, uh, yep. There's a load of loose ends. The Ariadne um, story path. You know, the whole thing. They could put that in as a massive chunk. I've, I've gone over this a million times. Anyways, we've got Manic Maynard in the house. There's loads of other loose ends as well, people. You could probably think of five just without even thinking about it. Heck no, not for a long time. There's still a ton of content they've promised and so far not delivered. And I think Sean of the Murrays will want to fulfill that. Plus, I feel that it's always been his first child, his baby. He won't give up on it, not until at least the fans have moved on. But it's, but it's such a vast game with such vast potential, it still has life. So long as the updates keep providing the content to keep fans happy and attract new fans, which so far it has done. Long live the gag. Yes, Man Manic Maynard. A lot of that, yeah, echoed sentiments, my friend. Echoed sentiments. Mike UK. People been saying it's dead for how many years? Then an update. Yeah, the funny thing is, Mike, every single time I do a reply to Is No Man's Sky Dying, chime in with my thoughts and feelings, probably about a good, what, 
two weeks to three weeks later, bang, there's an update. And it's usually a good one. So <laughs> let's hope that the same sort of pattern happens again, eh? Anyway, we've got Greybeard here. Hello Games will continue to update No Man's Sky for the foreseeable future. Like No Fire is understandably their, pri their passion and primary game going forwards for the foreseeable future. What you see is what you get in terms of No Man's Sky. There will be no evolution of the game beyond what it is now. If you still enjoy No Man's Sky, awesome, play on. I moved on about a year ago, says Greybeard. Oh, five likes on that, so maybe others have done the same. You see, I don't ever move on from No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is my go-to game whenever I want to just chillax, you know. But I do gravitate towards other games that sort of spark my interest. It's like I was playing Death in the Water 2 not so long ago. That's very different to No Man's Sky, but it's still exploration under the oceans. And the actual sharks and their movements are all procedurally generated. I love games that have got procedural generation in them. I think AI and procedural generation, if you could couple it together, it's, it's going to be the future of gaming. Imagine having a fully AI freaking dungeon master. Anyway, going off on a tangent. Carl70. Sean did say 2024 would be a big year, but how you read that is important. You could easily argue that No Man's Sky every year has been a big year and could just mean that there's some updates, some of which we've already had. But are updates to be all and end all? Heck no. I mean, if No Man's Sky never got another update, it would still have endless playability for me. Long may it last, says Carl70. You see, for me, I would say the time that a game dies is when the actual developer A, stops doing updates, and B, turns off the servers. If they ever turned off the servers for No Man's Sky so you couldn't name your discoveries, you couldn't upload your bases, you, know, you, you couldn't actually play multiplayer, that for me would be the sign of when No Man's Sky was dead. And there's been a lot of games companies that have turned off servers in the past. I used to play a game called White Knight Chronicles 2 and it was by Level 5 and Sony. It was big. I never expected the servers to ever be shut off on that game. And when it did, oh my heart sunk. I had like about 500 hours in that game. I loved it. Anyway, moving on, stuff. People said this last year, when Fractal was released, and when we ended up getting the biggest update since Origins, I don't think we'll get that, but we got some depth to pre-existing features. In this update, mainly frigates and factions. 100% agree. If that's not some meat, I don't know what is stuff. I agree as well. You know, I think Hello Games will circle around and revisit key elements that they've put in over the last few years and said, this is lacking depth. We'd add some more depth there. I honestly think settlements should be on that freaking list. Somewhere high up, top five level. Maybe I need to do a poll on what people's top five things for depth needs to be in No Man's Sky. That could be a decent poll. Shane Wilson. Still haven't been able to pick it back up since they restructured my infantry a couple of years back. I, I love the game so much it hurts not to play it. But I can't bring myself to do it all again, says Shane Wilson. Well, Shane Wilson, since they've actually done all that infantry sort of rejiggery pokery, they have added in boosted slots. If you're a min-maxer, you can still get your power levels close to what they were before. And also, I'd say your infantry has been made a lot larger in what you can carry, and your technology areas have actually been expanded. So you might find you might be able to get a few more modules in that you couldn't before. I would say now is probably a good time to jump back in and pick it back up and give it a play, if you're willing, you know? Solid Moon. I hope they flush out the game and make it truly limitless, like being able to go through all the quest lines to get different endings and titles, and make other improvements to the end game loop. As awesome as No Man's Sky has become, there's little to no purpose going beyond Euclid and Her Herbert Dimensions, other than for titles, and then it's 8 of the 255 in the dimensional loop. I completely agree. I've come up with ideas on reducing the galaxy count and making the galaxies more varied and more applicable to the actual glyph that they're associated to. Uh, 16 Galaxies Ideas video. Hit that up up there and take a look, see, because I think that could work quite nicely. Not that I think they'd ever do it.
Oh yeah, we've got Sontas in the house. Hello there, Eugene. Uh, my captain, I'm with you, but the question really is, are the majority of players with you? Is the story of the end is told enough, it will become the end. Human nature of those that are always looking for the next a big rush, it's self-fulfilling pro prophecy. I actually replied to that one. True, I see player numbers on Steam. It's an exact trend to the views of my videos. Get the same highs and lows. It's a bit of a roller coaster as No Man's Sky. So yeah, if, if you look at the graphs on who's playing and then you look at the views on my channel, it follows exactly the same curves. Now I've got TubeBuddy installed. If I go and click another YouTube content creator, larger or smaller than me, you can see the exact same sine wave. It is pretty funny, to be honest. Right, let's scroll on down. We've got Matros here. It might not be what we think, but I do believe when they say more is to come in the big year. But honestly, I think people enjoy having something to talk about more than anything else. The updates may slow or stop after 2024, but there's still tons to do. And for those who whose the game really clicks with there are plenty to keep them playing and coming back for a while they have absolutely transformed this game from launch and it's a gem as it is it honestly is matt i have to agree but where i would differ from what you're saying is i think new players coming in are spoiled they've got an abundance of stuff they can do and then even mid-game players, there's still an abundance of things where you can hone things and become like a master of a set things. Like you can become a ship hunter or a master base builder or an exploration explorer or a mission runner. There's so many different avenues you can move in or a frigate commander, you know, that sort of stuff. All mid-gamey type table stuff. But then after that, for those that have done all of that, S-classed everything, why? What is there at end game? Why? You know, yeah, you can go take on some Sentinel Walkers, but you've probably done that at mid level to get your freaking, you know, your conflict scanner and stuff like that. There's nothing for the Atlas Pass level freeze. There's nothing after you've done all the Remembrance terminals. There's there's just no end game. There needs to be something after you've done all that. A challenge that's beyond the challenges that you have at mid game and and first starting out. You know, when you're first starting out, surviving is a freaking task and a half. But there's not that challenge that's carried all the way through. And even if there was, you could just swap the game mode. I kind of feel that the game mode swapping should have been some sort of end game perk. But I always get told off when I say that. I don't understand why. Anyway, here we go. We've got Boris CJ. Once Light No Fire launches, they will concentrate on that for a while. But Sean seems to want to get No Man's Sky's ratings into overwhelmingly positive so i don't think he would ever completely abandon it yeah i mean it, it is a, a passion project no man's sky it's what got them from all of their big game places they worked at like the eas and places like that where they left and down tools to set out their own company surely even sold his own house to float the creation of no man's sky so I get that it's it, it's probably beyond what we can measure and how they actually feel about No Man's Sky. Their, their love for No Man's Sky is probably, like somebody mentioned earlier, like their firstborn child. So yeah, I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's going anywhere for a long time. I even think that Hello Games might move on to Light No Fire at some point, continue updating No Man's Sky, give it the odd tickle. But then I think everything that they learn from Light No Fire once we've like next gen, next gen, next gen consoles, 10 years on from Light No Fire being out, Hello Games might go, we have another ambitious project that we want to announce. No, that's that's my best Sean Murray. <laughs> oh, I've got our own. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing that. But yeah, <laughs> God. But yeah. He might go on the Games Awards and go, ah, oh, I've got another ambitious project. And you know, you've got the other guy going, Really? Okay then. And then you let him. Yeah. And then he'll be like, it's No Man's Sky Reboot. Yes. And maybe it might be that there's going to be a multi biomed planet. You know, nearly as many planets as we've got in No Man's Sky, the first outing. But this is like the second simulation where, you know, developers moved on, took everything they learned from the Atlas and made a new simulation. And now you've got planets as like those in Light No Fire, but loads of them. You know, maybe billions, not, not quintillions. You know what I mean? We got Altar X. A game can only be dead if no one is playing. If a game stops getting updates, it's either abandoned or completed. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. And it's a very simple way of looking at it. That's a freaking awesome sentence, to be honest, Altarex. I don't really know what I can say. There's no room for argument there. There's no real room for discord or debate. You're right. <laughs> That's all I can say. You're freaking right. And that has not happened with No Man's Sky. So I don't know why these questions are rising. Is No Man's Sky dying? Is No Man's Sky dead? But what I would say is I know that viewers... I, I can see my own viewing figures. So I can see that that's not where it normally is when there's an update. And I'd imagine a lot of other content creators have seen that and then they've made the video to say, is No Man's Sky dying? Perhaps they've just gone by their own analytics rather than just, you know, looking at things. It's a game. It's a freaking video game. And there's a lot of video games that people can go and play. I'm playing Dragon's Dogma 2 right now. I'm not playing as much No Man's Sky. It doesn't mean I don't dislike No Man's Sky. It just means that I've got something else to play. Something that I probably don't enjoy as much as No Man's Sky. But there's different levels of enjoyment, isn't there? I enjoy Dragon's Dogma for different reasons to why I enjoy No Man's Sky. Anyway, I'm moving on because going up on a side tangent. Poison Elvis in the house! Hello there, Poison Elvis. This game is super fun, and I'll keep going for a long time to come. Hello Games has a formula that is working. Look how many people get all worked up when they put out an update stuff in Experimental. We lose our collective shite. Hype train, anyone? This game is addictive and amazing. I found my third squid ship in the wild in 256 last night. Yeah, I'm having fun. Long live No Man's Sky. I must admit, Poison Elvis, even when I'm standing in a station even now and an exotic flies in and you hear the different sound as it lands, you're running out to landing pads just to see what exotic has landed. Is it a squiddy? Is it a lovely little guppy? Has it got awesome ship wing animations? Yeah, I still get excited from time to time in No Man's Sky. Honestly do. Or sometimes I put boots on the ground on a planet that's one of those super biome type ones with a big flora on. It might have different sort of filters on it. And I still get a little bit excited then. Because sometimes you can come across a right corker that feels slightly rarer than most. The HK47. In my opinion, No Man's Sky is the best space game out there may be tied with the Outer Wilds. However, I sometimes struggle to find things to do in-game. Well, the HK, I think that brings me back to what I was saying before about how everything is structured with you know, new game, mid-game, but there's not much to do end-game. You've probably reached a point where I'm at, you know? You've probably reached end-game where you've S-classed everything, you've done everything, and now you're thinking, well, why? What do I do now? That's how I've been feeling for the last, like, year and a half to two years. I mean, they brought in autophages, which sort of made me think, aha, they're putting in endgame stuff. And it technically is, because you've got to have done the purge, you've got to have done the traces of metal, and there is one other prerequisite. Oh, yes, found an echo camp for all that sort of lovely stuff to start happening. So, yeah, I kind of feel that the echoes, the echoes update with the first, last, the first endgame content update they've done, and I'm really hoping that part four of the ARG is going to be that and more. I'm hoping they're going to put in a massive end game content update this year for people that have got S class everything, put in a big challenge. That's what I'm keeping my fingers crossed for, people in the universe. I guess it is. Anyway, programmist music. Hello Games needs their fans and player base at least as long as No Man's Sky 2 will be released, maybe in five to eight years. Not everyone will play Night Light No Fire in terms of space exploration, no, because one planet. You're quite right. No Man's Sky is still way ahead of anything else. Also, I think due to the cosmetic updates, Hello Games keeps the game fresh and interesting for players, for new players to discover the game. I think there is still potential for a couple of million of new players here. Older players will probably go, but the game that lasts that long will also create new players. Okay, I, I, I should reply to this one, I think. Nope. Uh, Cholin did. Okie dokie. Well, there's a couple of replies there. Yeah, we might see a remastered or reboot. And that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Yeah, she can call No Man's Sky 2 a reboot in a way. Yeah, because the actual the Remembrance Terminal law... The Atlas gets to speak to the creator of the simulation. The creator of the simulation is just going to let the Atlas you know, shut down. It's got 16 minutes left. And they've taken everything they know from this simulation. They're going to create a second one. And to me, that's a little sort of nod inside of the game lore 
that No Man's Sky and the simulation we know is going to die, but there will be another in future. I honestly think they're probably already working on No Man's Sky 2 in a roundabout way through Light No Fire. They're learning with Light No Fire and Light No Fire is going to be a stepping stone, I think, to maybe a No Man's Sky 2. But, you know, that's just gut feeling. Anyway, here we go. We've got Sash King of 666. To be honest, I played more Helldivers 2 than No Man's Sky. But I'd always come back to No Man's Sky for weekend missions to get my Zen gameplay fix. To be honest, if I've had a fairly stressful day at work, there's nothing more than what I like to do is just to throw on No Man's Sky and just sort of you know, vegetate, mooch about, visit a couple of planets. Yeah. Anyway, we got Kalia Hope. Hello there, Kalo Hope. Okay, still left. Tame high flying and underwater creatures as companions or pets. Yes, there are ways to do that. Miyogi has done that. I guess he has. But yeah, you need to be on a PC or crazy. Freighters and freighter epic battles, or at least bring back the Singularity core. Yes, yeah, Singularity engines, definitely. Yeah, so you can you know, open up black holes whenever you want from your freighter bridge. Yeah. A new Exocraft, or at least Exocraft expansion slots. Mm, I don't really use the Exocrafts we've got, and extra slots doesn't really bother me. Introducing living freighter types, or at least bring back the Normandy frigate. Yeah, it would be nice if you can rerun expeditions whenever you want. I think I thought that's what they were doing with this whole um, console that they put inside the Nexus, but no. But yeah, it would be quite cool to see living freighters, considering we've got living frigates. It does feel that there is a missing link there, doesn't it? It really does. And I think we might see more added to the living ships as well, because they don't have the full ensemble of weapons for their ships either. Add functions to useless items such as station overrides. Heck yes, been waiting two years on that one. Please get that sorted, that'd be lovely. Tie loose story ends together and lore together. 100% agree with that one. Allow all past expeditions to be played at any time by new players. I think we just touched on that one, lovely. Give us settlements and multiple features omitted from Nintendo Switch consoles. Yeah, I, it, can it be brought to the Switch? This is why I think they might revisit settlements and change them up a little bit. Maybe not make them so procedural, or if they do, maybe optimise them to the point where it will work on Switch. Introduce ship racing, or at least expand on ship customization options. Heck yes. Switch 2 is supposed to have VR. Uh, why wouldn't you make it compatible? I think bit Switch VR would be difficult. I don't know. Anyway, let's scroll down. James MC. I know you read the comments. Hello, games. What is the override for? Love you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to see the overrides done something with. Light No Fire crossover upgrade in No Man's Sky Forever. And I think this is the same guy replying to his own comment over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have just put it in one, mate, to be fair. But there we go. Yeah, yeah, Light No Fire, Babylon, blah, 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 of course. Yeah. And all that. Yeah, got. Cool. Let's scroll on down. We've got Cholin. Of course not. How is this even a question? I agree, after Light No Fire drops updates for No Man's Sky will ramp down, but even after updates stop, the game isn't dead. So long as there is an active community, if the proper mod support for the game could go on for another 10 years. Yeah, you see, that's another thing, isn't it? There is the whole modding community, and it gets greatly overlooked when it comes to downtime. I have installed a couple of mods and had a little play, and after I've got my gaming PC up and running, I'm hoping to do a little bit more modded No Man's Sky just to see what people inside the verse have managed to push the engine to do on a high-end PC. So that's something I do plan to look into a bit more during downtime, you know? Fitzgerald Michael. Hello there, mate. No Man's Sky is still a great game too. Get lost in, lots to do. Yep. Yeah. It really is. AK James. Hello there. I don't think it's dead, but in my honest opinion, seeing how Hello Games is a smaller team, they're probably slowly taper off the No Man's Sky spigot in favour of Light No Fire once it releases. Maybe not immediately, but probably over the course of a few years after Low no Light No Fire launches. Echoed that sentiment right at the top of this whole poll, my friend. I guess you could be right. But I do feel that they will try to keep both communities happy as long as possible. Mick Bohannon. I mean, hardcore players will always boot the game. 
Personally, I have the game since day one, special edition, and that lacks the de deepness kind of makes me play only after updates or expeditions. I, well, you, you know how often I play. I definitely do the weekend missions. I've started a new PC save. I'm trying to keep myself busy in No Man's Sky because without it, I actually, I do get the itch to jump in and play, even if it is just a bumble about and do very little. Less than 200 people are actively watching No Man's Sky on Twitch right now. By contrast, something obscure as Goat Simulator 3 has 1.3k people watching. Holy fudge. Yeah, well, going by my analytics, the age range of people that watch me is 30 and over. Not so sure Twitch is the platform of choice. I don't do Twitch. It kind of feels younger than the demographic. Could be wrong. So all I'm pointing out there is, you know, No Man's Sky probably isn't for some of the younger audience. Saying that, I bought No Man's Sky for my friend's kid, and he loves Minecraft, and he jumped in and I put him into creative mode, and he was playing No Man's Sky, doing the base building for some time. But what he said that it lacked is the, the ability to put down individual bricks like Minecraft. You know, and you, you can put down cuboids and cuboid rooms, but it's not quite the same, is it? I still play Red Dead Online. It seems to have a healthy player base despite no content updates. Even if No Man's Sky has no more updates, I predict it will have a healthy player base too. So if a dead game is just one with no updates, then No Man's Sky is on its way to being on the critical list. However, I don't call that a dead game. A dead game has no or few players. I've seen plenty of them, even with quarterly updates. So No Man's Sky is not and is far off from being dead. Yeah, well said, well said. Yeah, cool. what did I actually reply to that? I put, dead games to me are when the devs turn off the multiplayer servers. I love no, I, I've already said that earlier on, haven't I? Yeah, cool, yeah. Michael Corplay. Hello again, Michael Corplay, with a crazy little avatar there. Thank you. What if there's cultures and mythology around the whole planet? American, African, Asian, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, a little bit more like, um, friggin' Lord of the Ringsy type stuff, or even Light No Fire type stuff. Uh, maybe in No Man's Sky 2, perhaps. And then I think you've just replied to your own comments again with loads of extra stuff that you thought of afterwards. You know, you can hit edit to your comment and then you can just continue on, you know? I mean, you've got some crazy ideas, my friend, I guess. No Man's Sky, Trek Wars, based on crossover updates. And they have done the whole sort of Normandy. They could do other crossovers again. That could be quite nice. That could be quite welcome. I don't know where they would do the crossover. It, really, it might be cool if they did one with Starfield. I mean, he did bump shoulders and looked quite pally with Bethesda and good old Todd Howard at the last Game Awards. Maybe a No Man's Sky... Starfield crossover might be a thing after Starfield gets a couple more updates. Maybe. No man Starfield, yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, mate. Freaking nice. Okay, let's, let's carry on down then. Okay, we've got Seth's gaming and stuff. If it's dead, I don't care. I'd still play and upload stuff about it because I want to. Laugh out loud, says Seth's gaming and stuff. Oh, there we go. Has he got a channel? Has this Seth Gaming got a channel? I don't know whether I can just jump to his channel let's have a quick look see if he's got a channel is he uploading no man's sky stuff is it worth hitting him a sub let's have a quick look see um yes he does no man's sky and he'd done one nine hours ago and he's found some diplos he's got a base you know what i'll just hit a little sub yeah, might as well there you go seth there you are mate boom he's got 402 subscribers 611 videos apparently not come across him before so maybe it's worth a look anyway let's just jump on back over here cool we've got pookie 8063 no lol 5000 10000 players a month on steam alone regular updates lobbies filled active community it's absolutely ridiculous to say it's dead yeah yeah, and a couple of people pointed out that they're, they're like small numbers, to be fair. But they're not small numbers for a game that's eight years old, when you look at it that way. And also when you look at the uptick that No Man's Sky gets on every single update, that just shows that it's got a massive audience that's waiting for that content update. But what that also says to me, when you see that massive uptick in players coming back to play it, 
is they're probably at the point where they've S-classed everything. They're at the point of end game. They're looking for something juicy. And what you see on every update, apart from when they offered it free for that whole weekend, is people jump in. There's a massive uptick for about a good week and then it just levels off and then it plummets rather quickly. I would say Hello Games now needs to focus on putting out an update that holds players' interest more. Either given the players more things to do that they can create in game, like creating your own challenges, creating your own expeditions, or creating things that players can do once they visit your base. Maybe set up some sort of puzzles or high chests that have got items in for them to find. Hello Games need to think of how they can kind of put more into the community's hands. If they are hoping to move to Light No Fire, it'd be nice if we had meaningful ways to improve the universe rather than Hello Games having to. It's like even if they added in a spore element where we could create our own creatures, or if we could terraform planets and then populate those planets with the wonders and the favourite things that we found in the universe. That might be interesting, because then players can visit your whole place rather than visit a base. They could visit every single planet, visit your actual station, maybe give a station ownership in abandoned systems. I don't know. There's a lot they could do, and they sort of played with that in the Utopia Expedition. The Utopia Expedition was actually an abandoned station, and after we scanned all those planets for the Utopia Corporation, it brought the system back to life. If you visit that system after the actual um, expedition ended, it's actually a functioning station again. It was very interesting. Enough now. It's been at least a half a year since the question keeps popping up and gets old. Go cool. And I replied, I put agree, and each time it appears Hello Games drops an update around a month later. Makes me chuckle, but then like clockwork, the question pops up again. I think the question pops up again and again, mainly because people are seeing those peaks and troughs. And if they're quite new to doing content, or if they don't really understand how Hello Games operates, they can see those Steam numbers peak and then you know fall away so some people can see that almost like you know you've got like a, a heart monitor beep 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 beep, beep. Well, as soon as they see a flat line beep they're like is it dead quick get resuscitating it and they don't realize that hello games is going to jump back in in a couple of weeks and boom there's another update for you boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah i think it just comes with the territory I think we're going to see this question raise itself every now and again. And just like somebody else in the comments said, it's nice to get debate and discord going. It's nice just to be talking about things. And I think that this video hopefully has done a bit of that. I'm hoping that the poll that I've put out there done a bit of that. And if you do like these sort of videos, I do try to do polls that are quite meaningful on No Man's Sky and its direction or what we're hoping to see or ideas even. And then do one of these sort of pod podcasty deep divey type videos i'm hoping to do maybe one a week or once a fortnight that sort of thing i don't want to commit to anything crazy and i don't want to try and make news out of nothing but at the same time i still want to get people talking i still want people excited for this year because Sean of the murrays did say this year will be a big year and i do think it's going to be i still have high hopes for the summer of this year and part four of the arg i'm hoping adds to what we've got delivered in echoes and i'm hoping it's going to be end game challenge and end game content that keeps players coming back maybe doing raids into the realm of glass into the void to bring back awesome modules maybe new ship parts hence why we've got ship customizational tools inside a game now that's my thoughts and feelings people that's where i think the direction might be going that's where i hope it's going that's what my gut's telling me what's your gut telling you sound off in the comments or i might do a poll anyway take care salute to mondo goodbye goodbye and goodbye again <laughs>